Welcome back to the next video or part two of uh, design for identity and access management. In part first, let me help you to revise. Uh, that's what we, we explained. We try to understand the basic guidelines for IAM solutions, then design for Azure AD, B2B and B2C. Now in this video, we are going to design for conditional access. Let me highlight this right here. So before we do anything, we first understand what it is. Though we have explained this many times, but for the sake of this video, uh, a brief intro would be fine. So conditional access uh, is a tool that Azure Active Directory provides or uses to allow or deny access to resources by uh, users or applications or <clears throat> principle, service principle, uh, by assigning conditions. If they met the condition, like if and then kind of thing. So if they met the condition, either they will allow or they would be denied for that particular access request. So during sign-in, conditional access examines who the user is, where the user is, and from what device the user is requesting access. Based on these signals, conditional access can allow access or enforce MFA or deny access. Well, MFA is a different service that we already covered in the previous uh, videos, we all know what MFA is, but here it is working in, in coordination with the uh, conditional access. If certain condition met, you find uh, the risk level is not high, maybe medium, and then you thought rather than giving access, let's challenge the user for MFA. So yes, MFA works pretty well with the conditional access, and we should always use both of these together as a best practice. However, license is involved. <laughs> so we need to think from the license perspective as well. So let's see a few examples of the conditional access just to set the uh, platform. So uh, we, we already gave this example where MFA can be used to provide a secondary authentication for access certain applications. Uh, MFA can be selectively applied to certain users like admin will always use MFA or just users coming from external network should use MFA. Uh, require users to access application only from managed devices. A managed device is a device that meets your standards for security and compliance. Maybe you guys are managing through Intune, things like that. So the point is in conditional access, you assign certain conditions. If you want to deep dive, you can see the previous video that we have created uh, a year ago, I guess. Anyways, the point is, there are certain conditions that you assign and as per the condition, you assign the uh, what to do, either allow, deny, or challenge MFA. Now, so we, are, we understand what uh, conditional access is now. And now this is the time to understand or go through certain considerations. So what are those considerations? Well, we have covered pretty much MFA because this is the very interesting and relatable uh, attribute. So yes. Now, <clears throat> report only mode. This is something that allows admins to evaluate the impact of conditional access policies before enabling them in the environment. Well, yes, because these are the policies which could impact or which will impact uh, the entire user base of yours. So you must check it first, uh, what kind of impact it is. 
is it something that you want or is it something maybe you're hampering some other users you couldn't think about maybe vpn users couldn't uh, get the access things like that so it is more like report only mode will help you understand who all are getting affected in the right way or in the wrong way then it happens like your application is not meant for everyone in the world sometimes sometimes they do so as per your workload your application uh, you can create a named location that includes all the geographic areas from which you would never expect a sign in to occur then create a policy for all applications that block sign in from that named location and make sure to exempt your admin from this policy right so rather than applying mfa everywhere or any other condition you can play smart you know your user base is to xyz region or maybe a xyz geography then you can create a named location and just block the access from locations that you think uh, your user will never come from there <clears throat> Now, uh, managed devices. Well, we talked briefly uh, at the beginning. So you probably don't want certain resources in your environment to be, to be accessed by devices with an unknown protection level. Or maybe you have seen this quite often in the organizations where all those mobile devices are uh, managed by Intune. Maybe this is your device, but still there is a compliance level. So you could use that uh, as a condition. If you're, if you're accessing applications with the help of your mobile phone, then your, your managed device should be in compliant state. Only then you would have the access, can apply those kind of conditions. You can think that way for the security purpose, of course. And then we have approved client applications. This is more like uh, employees use their mobile devices for both personal and work tasks. Like I do, I have my personal mobile phone. Uh, I use it for uh, or to access my office related uh, workloads as well and it is compliant and well managed and it receives all the policies which is maintained by my company well <clears throat> in these scenarios you must decide whether to manage the entire device or just the data on it if managing only data and access you can require only approved cloud applications this can help to protect your corporate data all right, we need to think for that as well. Now, you <clears throat> three default policies can be enabled by, de by default in, in CA, uh, which says require all users to register for MFA, require a password change for users who are at high risk or require MFA for user with medium or high sign-in risk. Access overrides all other assignments for a user and has the power to block your entire organization from signing on to your tenant. It can be used. For example, when you are migrating an app to Azure AD, but you aren't ready for anyone to sign in yet, you can also block certain network locations from accessing your cloud apps or block apps using legacy authentication from accessing your tenant resources, right? <clears throat> then there is this what if tool, uh, which helps you plan and troubleshoot your conditional access policies. The what if tool enables you to test your proposed conditional access policies before you implement them. You must use that before you apply those policies. And yes, of course, as I said at the beginning, uh, it requires, licenses. 
So to use conditional access, you need an Azure AD Premium P1 or P2 license. If you have a Microsoft 365 Business Premium license, you also have access to conditional access features. So these are the things we should keep in mind uh, while designing for conditional access. These things are very important and we should not miss or ignore these things because it could backfire, right? And you don't want that. All right, so this is all about conditional access and now it's time to explore a little bit or design for identity protection. So design for identity protection is uh, all about uh, automating detection and uh, let me delete this, automating detection and remediation of identity-based risks. As it says, identity protection. So yes, it can detect and remediate identity-based risk. It will help you investigate risks. And also you can export the risk detection data for third-party tools, any other SIM tool maybe. So <clears throat> that's what the identity protection is. And it also requires a license, P2 license. So, Let's try to understand it a little more. The signals generated by and fed to identity protection can be exported to the other tools. For example, conditional access can make decisions based on your organization policies. You could feed information to a security information and event management system, SIM tool. Or for the investigation, Azure has its own SIM tool. Sentinel, but you could also utilize third party. So uh, here is an example where a user uh, attempts to sign into Azure Active Directory. Azure already calculates real time sign in risk based on sign in properties. Identity protection then aggregates the user's risk. If the risk level meets the identity protection policy threshold, the user may be blocked or challenged by MFA. If the user risk level is acceptable, they are granted access. So yes, identity uh, protection also can work in coordination with MFA. And there are multiple levels that you can define like low, medium, and high. And as per the risk level, you can choose your action. So, to do that, we need to define the risk policies, yeah? So risk policies, let me color this red. And risk policy detection in Azure AD uh, include any identify suspicious actions related to user accounts in the, in the directory. And there are two risk policies that are evaluated as you can see here, user and sign-in. Okay, so let's try to understand it a little, little further. A user risk represents the probability that a given identity or account is compromised. User risk. For example, the user's valid credentials have been leaked. These risks are calculated offline using Microsoft's internal and external threat intelligence sources. Uh, let's see some user risk. Uh, Microsoft checks for leaked credentials from the dark web paste sites or the sources. These leaked credentials are checked against Azure AD users and accordingly it will tag it. In Azure AD Threat Intelligence, this risk detection uh, type indicates user activity that is unusual for the given user or is consistent with known attack pattern. <clears throat> Microsoft 
recommends is to set the user risk policy threshold too high. Well, we have covered IP protection in, deep, in, in little depth in previous videos. Just wanted to highlight here, as I was saying, in design for ID protection, there are multiple risk levels, low, medium, high. So if it is a user risk, detection of a user risk, we should set it to threshold, the risk policy threshold to high. Because we apply conditions differently for the low, we may be allowing it for the medium, we may be asking for the MFA, but for the high, maybe we are blocking it. So user risk should be high. Now let's try to understand sign-in risk. Well, sign-in risk represents the probability that a given sign-in or means authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner. Now, sign-in risk can be calculated in real time or offline. Let's see some examples for it. Like anonymous IP address, the risk detection type indicates sign-in from anonymous IP address, maybe a Tor browser or anonymized VPNs. So your identity protection will definitely pick that up and put it as sign in risk. Atypical travel. It is more like uh, right now you're accessing your application from India and within five minutes you're accessing from US. You have seen that in, in, in Google if you're using Gmail, if you try to access from a different location, it gives you some numbers. This is kind of example of this. Uh, malware linked IP addresses. Well, it will pick that up. The identity protection and threat intelligence will pick that up. This uh, uh, malware is known to actively communicate with a bot server and password is spray. The risk detection is triggered when a password spray attack has been performed. Password spray is one of the most popular attacks. Bad actors try to defeat lockout and detection by trying many users against one password. That's what the password spray is. Now, Microsoft recommendation is to set the sign in risk policy to medium and above and allow self remediation options. Self-remediation options like password change or multi-factor authentication will have less impact than blocking users because you also want to do the work. You cannot block everything out. So you need to be prudent how to apply these policies and these things you need to keep in mind. Okay, well, I think that's, that's, that's good enough. And let's uh, meet in another video. It's not a deep down, deep dive video. These videos are for the design considerations and I hope this will help. Well, thank you for watching and you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.